Hello folks, welcome to my dining room, but today it's Roy's ZV Lab. Yeah, my wife's traveling on business. I would never do this if she was home, but you won't tell her, I'm sure. So what are we doing today? We're building a small head in. I'm going to show you how it's all wired together. And then I'm going to show you the difference between HDMI, ZVHD, and ZVSD video. This is pretty exciting stuff. And having a ball doing it. So first of all, what is my head end comprised of? Two ZV units, a four channel 2640 and the 12 channel 2312. So I've got 16 channels of broadcast video here on my little mini head end. And I'm using an old Blu-ray DVD player that I've had now for years. It was buried in the basement. I had to dig it out. But it's an interesting Panasonic BDT100. And why it's interesting is it has HDMI component and composite output that are all live all the time. So first of all, I want to show you how we set this little system up. Two ZV units simply have their RF connector outputs into a piece of RF cable. And that RF cable, RG6, runs into a combiner. So it's combining the two ZV units into one piece of coax. And that one piece of coax goes around and feeds the video on the back of the TV. And on the back of the TV, we only have two connections. We have the RF input, and then I have an HDMI connection. It's a little dark back here, I apologize for that. So we're going to show you the difference between an RF generated modulated picture in both HD and SD compared to HDMI. So on the back of the Panasonic DVD player, we have HDMI connected, component, and composite. Now the, the other connections are to create a small local area network. We have this blue cable is connecting the two ZV units together, daisy chaining them if you will. And then the orange cable runs over to a small laptop that I happen to be using to run Maestro programming and management system. So using the Maestro system, I updated the firmware on these two units because they we introduced some new firmware last week. And it took about five minutes to do that. Very, very easy to do. And now let's play and look at some videos. Now I know this is ridiculous using an iPhone to show you the difference between HDMI and SD and HD modulation. But it actually does serve a purpose. And if you have an opportunity to play with these units, this is a great thing to do, and it's an awful lot of fun. So first of all, let's start the video. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to look at the different sources. So first of all, let's go to the input. And we're on TV, as you can see there. And once we're in TV, channel 5.1, this is our SD480 QAM digital modulated picture. Absolutely fantastic, if you ask me. And now let's move to our HD modulated picture. And this is channel 7.1, is our HD modulated picture. And then finally, we could go in and change the input source to HDMI. And this Sony takes a little bit of a while to move over to HDMI. And that is a full-blown HDMI picture, directly out of the Blu-ray player, using a Blu-ray disc right into the TV. Again, let's go back to TV. And let's go, that's the HD picture, channel 7.1. And let's go to channel 
and that is the 2312 SD picture. I wish you were in my dining room to see how good this looks. Now I'm not here to tell you that a 480 SD modulated picture is going to be as good as an HDMI picture or even as good as our HD modulated picture. But I am here to tell you that it's darn good. And for very little money per channel, it's a perfect opportunity for college dormitories and maybe assisted living facilities, RV parks, prisons, anywhere that you want digital video, but you don't necessarily want to spend for HD. So that's it. That's my little laboratory in my dining room. And again, don't tell my wife. Thanks.